Chemists at Rice University in Houston, Texas, are developing methods for spinning carbon nanotubes into long fibers that could be used as transmission lines for the electrical grid. Making carbon nanotubes into fibers was a dream of the late Rice professor Richard Smalley, who shared the 1996 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his discovery of the spherical carbon molecules called buckyballs. Individual nanotubes have remarkable properties. They're lightweight, they're strong, and they can be electrically conductive. But assembling them into large structures that retain these properties has been difficult. The rice process begins with the production of carbon nanotubes inside this reactor. In this footage, the reactor is down for repairs, but when in operation, it produces about a gram every hour of high-quality carbon nanotubes. Inside the pipe, where temperatures reach 1,000 degrees Celsius, carbon monoxide alights on droplets of iron catalyst and decomposes. The carbon atoms build back up into hollow nanotubes. Nanotubes are really interesting because they have an incredible combination of uh, properties. Uh, from a material science or a material engineer, it's, it's almost like uh, the idea of playground. Uh, they're very strong, they have very high strength and very high stiffness. And uh, also, uh, some of the nanotubes, uh, the ones that have uh, a structure called armchair, uh, are uh, very good uh, conductors uh, of uh, electricity, um, better than copper and silver. And uh, uh, they also, uh, all the nanotubes are also very good conductors of heat, they have a high uh, thermal conductivity. Moreover, being made of carbon, their density is pretty low, it's more or less the density of, typical density of plastics. And so the combination of all these properties makes them very interesting for a lot of applications. In our case, you would want to use them as nanoparticles. And when you use them as nanoparticles, that's where you would have the most advantage compared to uh, metals. The next step is an acid rinse that removes traces of iron catalyst from the nanotubes. A chamber of nanotubes is fastened to a flask of boiling hydrochloric acid. As the acid condenses and drips onto the tubes, it carries away any impurities. Nanotubes are not soluble in even this very strong acid. The pure nanotubes are mixed with a super acid, called chlorosulfonic acid, and loaded into a mixing chamber whose motion encourages the nanotubes to line up with one another. The better the alignment of the nanotubes in a fiber, the better the properties of the fiber will be. Well-aligned nanotubes will create a very strong electrically conductive fiber. The nanotube solution is pushed through the tip of a needle into a jar of ether that dissolves the acid, leaving behind a pure nanotube fiber. This process can be used to make fibers hundreds of meters long. The tensile strength of the nanotube fiber can then be measured by placing it in a stress tester. The vises pull on the fiber from either end until it breaks. The nanotube fibers can currently withstand about 350 megapascals of pressure before failing. That's slightly less than a human hair, but still considered fairly strong for its diameter. And why would you want to make these microscopic articles is because as an engineer, uh, engineers work, have to work with microscopic building blocks. Um, for example, when engineers work with polymers, which polymers are um, a good parallel for nanotubes, uh, they don't work with individual polymer molecules. Like uh, you know, a plastic bag is uh, billions and billions of polyethylene molecules uh, put together in a sheet, or uh, um, a Kevlar fiber in a bulletproof vest uh, is uh, billions and billions of uh, uh, molecules of uh, called uh, a polymer called PPTA that are uh, um, uh, uh, assembled together in a very well aligned fashion and then uh, they are woven into a fiber.